Twenty point eight. I told you I come around here with this thing. I was trying to. I was just hitting it as hard as I could. Came through and I was just too low, and I got those branches. <laughs> Here today I have the VDQ 210 from Voodoo Quads. This has taken over as one of my favorite racing quads. This is a small enough size now and light enough that it feels like it's just as nimble as any other thing I've ever flown. Now, this thing is flying with uh, 2300 kV Voodoo Quad motors. And if I can turn this so you can see it, there it is. 2300 kV motors. I got uh, some Voodoo Quads, uh, 20 amp ESCs in here. And uh, just to give you a quick overview of this outside before we go into the inside. The uh, wires, of course, have, have to be braided because this is a Voodoo Quads quadcopter and that's just what they do. I'm running uh, 5046 bullnose props on this. And up here on the top has the uh, power wires coming out through the middle of the plate and they have this, this little grommet that slides around the wires and then that whole thing slides into the frame and then there's this extra piece of carbon fiber right here that goes um, and connects to these two screws to hold that grommet in place and that's just to keep your wire up out of the way of your motors. Uh, back here in the back also there's a little groove that's designed to have uh, your, I would assume to have your uh, antenna wire going through there. The only problem is it has I have to have this big zip tie around the whole outside to hold this thing up so that it doesn't push down like this. Uh, it'd been kind of nice if there were two little holes up here on top that would go on either side of the antenna so you could have a, a, a zip tie go down underneath and back up and then zip tie it and that would just help hold it in place a little better. Uh, let's see, up here in the front it has this custom uh, mounting for the uh, camera. And if you find that when you're flying and you're, if you find that your quadcopter is going up more than it is forward, then you have one of two problems. And you can try to solve it one of two ways. You can either be more aggressive on the tilt and tilt your quadcopter more, or you can angle your camera up a little bit more and that will uh, naturally cause your quadcopter to tilt more and that will help you keep your quadcopter down on the ground a little bit more. Now if you find that you're constantly going slow and slow and you know you go fast and you slow it down then maybe your uh, quadcopter uh, camera is angled a little bit too much and you might need to lower it down. Anyway up here on the front I have the uh, ESCs mounted up here to this arm just because there wasn't I didn't want to have to deal with trying to squeeze it in there with the camera mount. Back here on the back I have them uh, buried inside underneath the main plate. Uh, let's see, up here on the front I have these antenna holders and that's just to keep the antennas up here at a 90 degree angle and uh, it's just zip tied on there and the antennas come up through the back and into the, um, into the holder there. So here I have the top plate unscrewed and I have the uh, power wire pulled out of the little grommet holder here and uh, it just barely pulls out of the way because I got these wires cut just the right length. Now, you, whoops, you can see here I have the video transmitter up here and this power wire comes down and it solders into the uh, power distribution board. And down here on the power distribution board, I have it separated off of the main plate with one um, nylon nut there and then there's a little bit bigger spacer between the power distribution board and the um, Nozzle 32 and that's just so that the wires have a little bit of space to run through here and also so that the wires don't or the uh, soldering job doesn't so uh, short out on the Nozzle 32. Now back here in the back like I said I have the ESC uh, right here and it, you can see here it comes off of the motor and it's back here underneath the plate. The other ESC is over here or it's wrapped up in black um, shrink wrap because I cut the wrong one or I soldered it wrong the first time and so it's wrapped in uh, black and then right here I have the FBVS01 and that's just a free sky battery voltage sensor so that I can read the voltage off the quadcopter without um, you know through the telemetry on the D4R2 uh, now this is the NASA 32 and these pins came unsoldered so looking at some of the Voodoo quad pictures I soldered them in so they came into the middle and what that does is it just keeps everything clean on the outside you don't have anything, any wire sticking out there and also you can see here I rotated the board so the USB port is accessible from this side now also these pins here I also turned those in 
pointed them in, into the middle and that's where um, it's getting its battery reading from this and this is just soldered I believe directly to the power distribution board as well uh, yeah also like I was saying this is the uh, iLapse uh, little sensor here that um, that the gate reads when you go through it and it needs to have five volts so what I did is it's actually this uh, red wire here the red and black it's just tagged onto this last um, set of pins because I'm not using them and that's where uh, this little uh, transponder pulls its juice from and this second pin right here this is where the battery uh, is getting voltage um, from the uh, for the to power the flight board because these ESCs are not um, they don't have BECs built into them so they're not providing any power back to the board so the board has to pull it from somewhere else so like I was saying this is the video transmitter up here and a video transmitter has a 5 volt output that you usually run out to your camera well in this case this camera can support a wider variety or a wider range of voltages so this one is actually powered directly off the power distribution board well like I said this NASA 32 requires 5 volts so where do you get 5 volts from well you can buy a voltage reducer or something like that to lower your five, your 12 volts or your um, 16 volts on a four cell battery down to five volts for this. Well, instead, what I did is I actually used the output of this, of the video transmitter. I took the power and the ground, and that's what actually comes back up here and plugs into this board so that the board can run off five volts. Now, I don't know if that's the exact way you're supposed to do it. In fact, I'd probably say most people will tell me, no, you're not supposed to do it that way. But the nice thing is it works. You're already, you already have a component on the quadcopter that's reducing the voltage down to, to 5 volts so why not go ahead and use that to power the board as soon as you plug this in as soon as you plug in your power supply into here it starts feeding juice to the video transmitter the video transmitter automatically starts outputting 5 volts which goes back into this board to power it so it's been working pretty well and I'm actually doing that not only on this quad but a couple other ones as well and here's the uh, D4R2 it's actually using uh, PPM to uh, talk to the uh, NASA 32. And on this side, I just soldered those uh, wires directly to the NASA 32 because I didn't want to have to deal with another big thing like this sticking inside here and taking up more room. Because when you're starting to get on these small quads like this 210, you're really trying to pack the stuff in here neat and tight and clean because <laughs> it just makes it a lot easier to work on later. Uh, so all these wires, all these um, signal wires, they all run up here and they're all kind of bundled up. I kind of twisted them all together. I don't know if you can see it very well, but they're all kind of twisted up inside um, between these two plates, the power distribution board and the NASA 32. And that's just to help get it, give it more of a clean look. And like I said, this is where uh, the NASA 32 is reading the full voltage of the battery pack off of this and this is soldered directly to the um, power distribution board. If you're trying to figure out where all your components should be laid out, well, how I did mine is I have my two ESCs back here and these wires coming off the ESCs to the power distribution board are very short and I put them back here and they're not they're not tied down right here maybe they should be but I got the wires strapped down back here and up here on this part of the uh, frame as well so I don't think they're going to go anywhere and then in the middle I have the uh, free sky battery voltage sensor, sensor like I said and also when I ran the power wires um, off the off the main distribution board back to the back I always try to find out find some place where I can zip tie them down and right here I got this little zip tie I don't know if you can see it very well but there's a zip tie right there and that's essentially holding those wires down to the board to the main plate that way if you tug on this power wire it's tugging on the wire itself not back here on those connections going into the power distribution board and that just makes for a lot stronger build and you can see here there's the the zip tie that i'm talking about and uh it's actually the, the holes down here are light, laid out pretty well for that kind of uh that kind of layout on the power wires this, this thing did take a pretty serious beating you know, the last time i flew it and uh, i ended up cracking the arm right up here and also, you can tell how bad it was. The uh, antenna actually got ripped off of the uh, little post right there. And when it landed, the, the uh, propeller was actually through this antenna wire. <laughs> It was uh, it was quite the quite the ordeal. Let me go ahead and show you some of the tuning I did. Now this tuning that I'm going to show you may not be perfect for yours, but it is how I got started, and it does make it fly really nice for me. So here we are in clean flight, and uh, 
this is how I kind of did my tuning. Over here on the left side, I changed the PID controller to Lux Float. And I pretty much left all these kind of how they were. And I increased the roll rates and the pitch rate and the yaw rate so that it would be a little bit more responsive on the uh, flips. Now, I think I, I think I may have raised these up a little bit, but I'll go ahead and show these up close. These are the um, PIDs here for... Um, for the VDQ210 that I'm using. And I'm very happy with the way that this actually turns out and has been flying. Here on the configuration tab, one thing I was talking to one of my friends about this evening was this motor stop. The nice thing about leaving the motor stop disabled so that when you arm the motors, your motors spin up. Now it doesn't spin up enough to take off, it just turns them on. Now the nice thing is, is that even if you drop your throttle all the way to zero, you're not actually going to lose control of the quadcopter because they're gonna keep that minimum amount of uh, spinning going on all the time. Now if you, have this turn, if you have this enabled, where the motor stop is enabled, then when you arm it, the motors don't spin up. And that's, that's not bad, it's just the way you can, one other thing you can choose. But that does give you the possibility of actually cutting your throttle too low to where it actually stops um, spinning the motors completely and then you you know you have the potential of falling out of the sky here on the receiver page you just want to make sure that all your throws are going from a uh, thousand up to two thousand and they're centering near 1500 as best they can but over here I, I also set up my um, expo on my um, on my sir on my quadcopter itself so that way it would I wouldn't have to do as much on my transmitter and I got it actually set to 0.65 over there so you can see I really didn't change a lot here in clean flight um, but let me get some flight footage so you can actually see how I can actually fly and laugh at my skills So this has just been a video about the VDQ-210. This is a great quadcopter. It's great for beginners, it's great for advanced flyers. The uh, thing you wanna make sure you do is make sure you have at least 2300 KV motors. You don't wanna be spending 2000 KV motors on this. At least, I don't think you do. Maybe you have a good reason to. I don't think I don't think there's a good reason to. 2300 seems to kind of be the, the sweet spot for this frame. Also, if you wanna get aggressive, you can start doing 50, 46 props. If you wanna stay kind of uh, on the conservative side, you can start with some 50, 30 props. They'd be pretty tame on this. And uh, it, like I said, this is a great quadcopter for beginners and it's also awesome for uh, advanced flyers because I see them flying it all the time. Anyway, this is my VDQ210. If you have any questions about it, leave me in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.